Welcome to District Court. We're here for sentencing in the matter of State of Utah versus Ruby Frankie. Ms. Frankie is here with Mr. Winward. Mr. Clark and Mr. Shom are here for the State of Utah. And we are ready to proceed with sentencing. We are. Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, the terms of the sentence were agreed to as part of the plea agreement, correct? That is correct. There is a pre-sentence investigation report in the matter. I have reviewed that. Everyone has seen it? Yes. What about restitution, counsel, before we move on with other matters? We'd like to leave that open at this time, Your Honor. Um, the, I, I can get into that. I might be more comfortable if we approach to get into that. Is there an agreement that restitution, that uh, we reserve that f and for what period of time? Eight months is what we're anticipating. But, but I, I haven't talked to, to the defense counsel about that. We haven't discussed that, Your Honor. Is there any objection? No. All right. What's the state's position regarding sentencing? Your Honor, the state, I'll stand up. The state respectfully requests that the court sentence Ms. Frankie to consecutive prison terms for each of the four counts of aggravated child abuse. This sentence was agreed to by Ms. Frankie in her plea agreement and is also recommended by adult probation and parole. She committed horrible acts of child abuse. From May to August in 2023, Ms. Frankie and her business partner held her two children, ages nine and 11, turning 12, in a concentration camp-like setting. The children were regularly denied food, water, beds to sleep in, and virtually all forms of entertainment. They were isolated from others and were hidden when people came to visit the house where the children and the defendants were staying. The children were forced to do physical tasks, like carrying loaded boxes up and down stairs and wall sits or sitting against a wall without a chair or stool for hours at a time. They were also forced to do manual labor outdoors in the extreme summer heat, at times without shoes or socks. They were forced to stand outside on a cement patio in the summer heat for hours and even days at a time. They were beaten, and the 12-year-old was regularly bound hand and foot after he attempted to run away in mid-July. Both children had extensive physical injuries from the abuse that required hospitalization when they were found. The injuries from the binding to the 12-year-old are particularly awful. In addition to physical abuse, the children were emotionally abused to the extent that each believed, to some degree, that they deserved what was being done to them. Had the older of the children not had the courage to run away and ask a neighbor to call the police, heaven only knows how much longer he could have survived in that situation. After being caught, Ms. Frankie has shown considerable remorse, as evidenced by agreeing to serve consecutive prison terms and being willing to cooperate with the state against Ms. Hildebrandt. Ms. Hildebrandt. However, given the severity of the abuse she inflicted, consecutive terms are appropriate in this case. 23, Ms. Frankie and her business partner held her two children, ages 9 and 11, turning 12, in a concentration camp-like setting. The children were regularly denied food, water, beds to sleep in, and virtually all forms of entertainment. They were isolated from others and were hidden when people came to visit the house where the children and the defendants were staying. The children were forced to do physical tasks, like carrying loaded boxes up and down stairs and wall sits or sitting against a wall without a chair or stool for hours at a time. They were also forced to do manual labor outdoors in the extreme summer heat, at times without shoes or socks. They were forced to stand outside on a cement patio in the summer heat for hours and even days at a time. They were beaten, and the 12-year-old was regularly bound hand and foot after he attempted to run away in mid-July. Both children had extensive physical injuries from the abuse that required hospitalization when they were found. The injuries from the binding to the 12-year-old are particularly awful. In addition to physical abuse, the children were emotionally abused to the extent that each believed, to some degree, that they deserved what was being done to them. Had the older of the children not had the courage to run away and ask a neighbor to call the police, heaven only knows how much longer he could have survived in that situation. After being caught, Ms. Frankie has shown considerable remorse, as evidenced by agreeing to serve consecutive prison terms and being willing to cooperate with the state against Ms. Hildebrandt. Ms. Hildebrandt. However, given the severity of the abuse she inflicted, consecutive terms are appropriate in this case. As the court's aware, Section 76.3.401 lays out factors the court takes into account in determining whether consecutive or concurrent sentences should be imposed. Those factors are the gravity and circumstances of the offense, the number of victims, and the history, character, and rehabilitative needs of the defendant. As agreed to in the plea agreement, and as recommended by adult probation and parole, consecutive sentences are appropriate. This is due to the severity of the abuse to both victims. It could be argued that Ms. Frankie should receive a lesser sentence than Ms. Hildebrandt because of her remorse and willingness to cooperate with the state. However, the Board of Pardons and Parole will have broad latitude and will be able to take those facts into account when it determines how long each of the co-defendants will remain incarcerated. In conclusion, we respectfully request that the court um, go along with what was agreed to in the plea agreement and is recommended by adult probation and parole and impose consecutive sentences. Thank you. Anything else from the state? No, Your Honor. Mr. Linward? Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. I'm 
a few comments this morning, and the comments my client wishes to make in a few minutes. We are not suggesting, nor are we asking that the court deviate from the stipulated sentence contained in the written plea agreement. I want the court to know that through introspection and reflection, Ruby Frankie has become a serious student of her own actions. In the very early days of my involvement with Ruby, she was somewhat defensive, and she was still very much indoctrinated into a philosophy that was destructive. Fortunately, Ruby came to the stark realization of the errors in her thinking patterns and subsequent actions. To say that she was horrified by this realization would be to put it mildly. I have marveled at how quickly Ruby abandoned her defensive stance and moved toward her total acceptance of her actions <coughs> and to her sentence today. So far, she has used her time in jail to unwrap the layers upon layers of deceit and deception forced upon her over the last four years by an unscrupulous individual. Ruby realizes that she still has work to do in shedding those thinking errors and to reestablish a better and correct pattern of thinking and behavior. Ruby realizes that changing her thinking, reestablishing relationships, and healing are not simple or easy tasks. However, she is committed, committed to doing that work. I would like the court to know that Ruby Frankie is a delightful, respectful, and responsible person. She is open to feedback and addressing the consequences of her actions head on, and now ready to address your honor and accept your judgment. Thank you, Judge Walton. Thank you. Ms. Frankie has a statement she'd like to make. She does. Judge you, don't, you don't have to bend down the Okay, thank you. I would like to make a statement without any intent to change my stipulated sentence. For the past four years, I've chosen to follow counsel and guidance that has led me into a dark delusion. My distorted version of reality went largely unchecked as I would isolate from anyone who challenged me. I was led to believe that this world was an evil place filled with cops who control, hospitals that injure, government agencies that brainwash, church leaders who lie and lust, husbands who refuse to protect, and children who need abused. My choice to believe and behave this paranoia culminated into criminal activity for which I stand before you today ready to take accountability. Jody Hildebrandt was never my business partner, nor was I ever employed by her. I have never received wages from her or connections. Jody was employed as my son's counselor in 2019, and in 2020 I paid her to be my mentor. It is important to me to demonstrate my remorse and regret without blame. I take full accountability for my choices, and it is my preference that I serve a prison sentence. Thank you to the officers in Santa Clara and the Ivan City Police, Nick Hellman, Brian Palufo, Cy Pikivit, Mike Pondoyo in Tober, John Ward, D. Lewis, and Chief Flowers. You were the angels who came and saved my children. I especially want to thank Detective J. Bate, she plucked me out of a situation I didn't know how to get out of. And the moment she handcuffed me was the moment I gained my freedom. You were not the controlling ones. I was. Thank you to the medical staff at Intermountain Hospital. Your skill, tenderness, and professionalism helped to heal my children. Jody and I inflicted the injuries, not the hospital. Thank you to DCFS, the Children's Justice Center, Judge Basil, and other key adults. You've gathered my children under your wing and offered them love, compassion, encouragement. You were not the ones who were doing the brainwashing. Thank you to my Bishop Tom Hawks and my State President Jim Nelson for reminding me of the Lord's love for the lost. So much pain and suffering would have been avoided had I followed and heeded your counsel. I was the one who was deceived, not you. Thank you to the Washington County Prosecutor's Office, Ryan Shaw, the legal assistants and discovery clerks, Eric Clark, you exemplified to me how justice and mercy are meant to coexist. My charges are just. They offer safety to my family, accountability to the public, and they did show mercy to me. Thank you to my attorney, Lamar Winward, and his staff. I would not be where I am today without them. Thank you to Randy Kester for your limitless energy in healing my family. My dear friends, Pam and Roy, I'm so sorry for letting you down. Because of your association with me, your innocence was called into question. My mother-in-law, father-in-law, Kevin's family, my cousins, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, and neighbors, you all saw the warning signs long before I did, and you did what you could. You wanted to help, but I pushed you away. My mother and father, I have been utterly wretched to you. You have offered me unconditional love, 
and for that I have offered you unconditional contempt. My siblings and their spouses, because of my decision to roll around in a pigsty, I have dragged your families through the mud in public. Yet, when I desired to return as the prodigal sister, unlike the prodigal's brother in the Bible, you synced step with my parents and ran out to greet me. Your capacity to love is unprecedented. Kevin, my husband of more than 23 years, you are the love of my life. <laughs> so I'm so sorry to leave to you to finish what we both started together. The ending of that marriage is a tragedy. And you know that around my heart. And you know I'll never be able to undo. To my babies, my six little chicks, you are part of me. I was the mama duck who was consistently running you to safety. I can see now that over the past four years, I was in a deep undercurrent that led us to danger. I remember launching into darkness knowingly. I was so disoriented that I believed dark was light and light was wrong. I would do anything in this world for you. My will was to sacrifice all things masterfully manipulated into something very ugly. I took from you all that was soft and safe and good. I took from you your mother. How terrifying this must have been for you. I don't want to stop crying. You're hurting the tender souls. You are, you're so precious to me. I'm sorry. My choice to live in fear of the world has created a great vulnerability and a blind spot for me where I have broken hearts and I've caused people to suffer and I have betrayed sacred trust. Watching my community respond to my charges with justice and mercy and grace and love is all the evidence to know how wrong I've been. This world is full of really good people. And finally, I'm sorry for twisting God's word and distorting his doctrines. My greatest desire is to stand in his court someday spotless and confident. And Judge Walton, I know that standing before you today is a necessary step towards that end. Thank you to you and your staff for facilitating my opportunity to take accountability and to answer for my charges. I am humbled and willing to serve a prison, a prison sentence as long as it takes to continue unraveling all of the disinformation I have believed and bought, swallowed and acted out, and for my family to heal and for the community to heal. And I understand this is going to take time. I'm committed to continuing my learning until all of my toxic layers are shed, and I am ready to re-enter as a contributing member of our beautiful society. Thank you, Judge Walton. Thank you for your statement, Ms. Frankie. Yes, prior to the court imposing sentence. No, Your Honor. The sentence will be that Ms. Frankie serve four counts, four one to 15 year sentences based on her convictions for four counts of aggravated child abuse. Again, they will serve consecutively, be served consecutively pursuant to the party's agreement and the applicable statute. Under the applicable statute, the court finds that, a cons that consecutive sentences are appropriate. Ms. Frankie, the last thing I do need to tell you is that you have only 30 days to file or to perfect an appeal of any errors of the court by filing a written notice of appeal with the clerk of the court. If you don't do that within 30 days, you will lose your right to appeal. You also have the right to the assistance of an attorney on appeal and to have one appointed if you cannot afford to hire your own. Restitution, as agreed by the parties, will remain open for a period of eight months. Any of the parties can bring that matter back before the court within that, that period of time. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Honor. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next matter before the court is State of Utah versus Hildebrandt, case 2315-01763. Mr. Cherry is here representing Ms. Hildebrandt. Mr. Shum and Mr. Clark are here representing the state. Your Honor, we anticipated 10.30. I'm not saying that we need to wait till then, but can I have a moment, please? Approach, please.
Authority calls the matter in State of Utah versus Hildebrandt. Case 2315-01763. Council are present. Ms. Hildebrandt is present. Council, there is a pre-sentence investigation report. I have read it. Everyone has seen and reviewed that. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Again, the sentence was stipulated at the time of the plea agreement. What, what record do we need to make other than going forward with sentencing? Um, I, Your Honor, I, it, it would be repetitive. I, so I, I have the same statement just with the last few paragraphs where, where I was differentiating between Ms. Frank and Ms. Hildebrand. Okay, let's talk about, about housekeeping matters first. What about restitution? We, we stipulated to keep that open for eight months. It is appropriate, Your Honor, since we don't have any evidence with respect to restitution, and that's because it is still in the process of being gathered by uh, the county attorney's office. It's, a, it's completely appropriate for the court to make no orders with respect to restitution other than to reserve all issues regarding restitution, and we have no issue with the eight-month eight uh, uh, time frame. And the injunction that was previously issued by the court will remain in effect. It will. At least until that time. It will remain in effect until further order of this court. All right. Mr. Clark. Thanks, Your Honor. The state of Utah respectfully requests that the court sentence Ms. Hildebrandt to consecutive prison terms for each of the four counts of aggravated child abuse to which she has pleaded guilty. The sentence was agreed to her in her plea agreement and is also recommended by adult probation and parole. Ms. Hildebrandt committed awful acts of child abuse. From May to August 2023, she and her business partner held two children, ages 9 and 11, turning 12, in a concentration camp-like setting in her house in Ivan City. The children were regularly denied food, water, beds to sleep in, and virtually all forms of entertainment. They were isolated from others and were hidden when people came to visit the house. They were forced to do physical tasks, like carrying loaded boxes up and down stairs and doing wall sits or sitting against a wall without assistance of a chair or stool for hours at a time. They were forced to do manual labor outdoors in the extreme summer heat, often without shoes or socks. And they were also forced to stand outside on a cement patio in the summer heat for hours and even days. They were beaten, and the 12-year-old was regularly bound hand and foot after he attempted to run away in mid-July. Both children had extensive physical injuries from the abuse that required hospitalization to treat. The injuries from the binding are particularly bad. In addition to the physical abuse, the children were emotionally abused. They each believed to some degree that they deserved what was being done to them. And the older of the two children not had the courage to run away and ask a neighbor to call the police, Heaven only knows how much longer he could have survived. After being caught, Ms. Hildebrandt has shown little to no remorse for her actions. In telephone conversations that will be provided in full to the Board of Pardons and Parole, and which she knew to be recorded, she's repeatedly claimed that she is the victim and the children are the perpetrators. She's gone so far as to say that the things said in this proceeding and covered by the media today will be full of lies. The combination of three factors make Ms. Hildebrandt a significant threat to the community. First, the severity of the abuse she caused to be inflicted on young children. Second, her attitude that everything she did was justified and that she is being wrongfully imprisoned. And third, her training as a therapist and aptitude for using online resources to convince others to follow her guidance. Utah Code Section 76-3401 lays out three factors the court should consider in determining whether to impose concurrent or consecutive sentences. The first is the gravity and circumstances of the offense. The second is the number of victims. And the third is the history, character, and rehabilitative need of the defendant. As agreed to in the plea agreement and as recommended by adult probation and parole, consecutive sentences are appropriate here. This is due to the severity of the abuse to the two victims and the extreme need for Ms. Hildebrandt to be rehabilitated so that she no longer will present a risk to the community. The state respectfully requests that she be sentenced to four consecutive terms. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Terry? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I will be brief. As is always the case in cases that come before courts, there are two sides to every case. And as, um, and even in a case like this, that remains the case. Um, there are many, many allegations regarding these two individuals, um, Ms. Frankie and my client, Ms. Hildebrand. The only facts in this case that are adjudicated facts are those set forth in the plea agreement that she entered into, that she entered into freely and knowingly and voluntarily. Those facts, those adjudicated facts, are significant. They certainly provide a basis for the pleas and provide a basis for the stipulated sentence in this case. My experience with Ms. Hildebrandt is that she is not the person that she has been portrayed to be. But having said that, she has accepted responsibility in this case. She has entered into this plea agreement with a stipulated sentence of four consecutive uh, sentences. She did that at the time she entered into the plea agreement, knowing that that would be the court's order. 
she's before the court today knowing that that will be the court's order and she fully accepts that she accepts responsibility and she accepts the consequences for her conduct and we will submit it to the court on the stipulated agreement mr terry you suggested that there there are two sides to every case i generally agree with you Ms. Hildebrand didn't make a statement to AP&P in, in the course of the pre-sentence investigation report. Correct. Why did she not make a, make a statement? She wanted to reserve her right to make a statement before the court today, and she has a brief statement that she wants to read, Your Honor. Okay. And, and All right. I... Ms. Hildebrand? Go ahead. I sincerely love these children. I desire for them to heal physically and emotionally. One of the reasons I did not go to trial is that I did not want them to emotionally relive the experience which would have been detrimental to them. My hope and prayer is that they will heal and move forward to have beautiful lives. I am willing to submit to what the state feels would be an appropriate amount of time served to make restitution as an outcome. And in answer to your question, Your Honor, I knew that whatever she might say to the author of the pre-sentence report would probably be sound uh, hollow or, and self-serving, and perhaps it does today. But I know that my client, in the statement that she makes to the court today, that th th that statement is absolutely sincere. Not Does just Ms. Hildebrandt recognize that it's her behavior that, that caused the harm to the children that she's referred to in her statement? Your Honor, she recognizes that she was, along with Ms. Frankie, um, that, that she made decisions with respect to the discipline of those children that were wrong, that caused harm to those children. She fully recognizes that and accepts responsibility for that. All right. Anything else? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Hildebrandt, this, this circumstance is tragic. It's largely, of course, of your making by any measure. Your conduct in this case was disastrous for these children. Adults are supposed to protect children. Adults with specialized training in particular are supposed to protect children. You didn't do that in this case. In this, in this case, you terrorized children, and the results have been tragic. It's what happened to these children and your philosophy in dealing with them frankly seems detached from reality or any objective standard of decency or, or even common sense. And the court finds that it is appropriate that you serve a prison sentence. The court finds under the statute, Utah Code 76-3-401, that given the gravity and circumstances of the offenses, the number of victims and the history and character and needs of the defendant, that consecutive sentences are appropriate. The court imposes four one to 15 year sentences to be again served consecutively for each of the four counts of aggravated child abuse. The last thing I do need to tell you is that you only have 30 days to file or perfect an appeal of any error of the court by filing a written notice of appeal with the clerk of the court. If you don't do that, you will lose your right to appeal. That has to be filed in writing and again within 30 days. You also have the right to the assistance of an attorney and to have an attorney appointed if you cannot afford to hire your own. Thank you. We're in recess. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor.